eight camera moves to improve your narrative and your doc style shooting. Pity, you guys are cheating. Let's get started and see what we can do. Hi, this is JP Morgan. Today on The Sign Lens, we're gonna talk about cinematic camera moves you could apply both to documentary style shooting and to your cinema style shooting. We're using the Nine Dot Solutions C-Pan Arm. The reason we're using this arm is because it gives us both great slider type shots, parallax shots, and crane shots. We wanna look at all of those and how they can improve your video when you put them together into the piece that you're shooting. This is not just for narrative, it's not just for documentary, but it's certainly used in both. Look at Chef's Table. They use a ton of camera moves and cinematic lighting. It brings drama to the piece. It communicates emotion in a way that is very powerful when you use the right camera moves. So let's look at each of these camera moves and the emotion that they bring and how they advance our story. We're lighting this today with our Intellitech light cloth. It's a one by three. The reason this is nice, the Intellitech has a very, very low profile. I mean, well, it's a mat. We could tape it to the ceiling, quite frankly. The little box is about six inches but it makes it easy for us to get this up to the ceiling and out of the shot, out of our way if we need to. We put a grid on it to make it more focused. It's a one by three, so it kind of runs the table. It has a nice shape, kind of the same shape as the table, but this grid allows us to kind of focus it right onto the table. We also have a two by two uh, Intellitech light cloth in the background, kind of open up the shadows and give us a little bit of light on our slider. Because we want to do picture in picture, so you see the slider move, then you see actually what the camera's getting. So our first camera move is going to be a horizontal slider move. This is a classic and a staple of every filmmaker. Just this horizontal slider move will allow us to establish our two characters, see the game, see the things in the foreground kind of pass back and forth, just in introduce this game in a very interesting way. So I'm gonna do just a simple slider shot across the two scenes. I'm gonna start here on Keith. And so I'll just kind of introduce John as I come across here. And gentlemen, go ahead and start playing your cards there for me. And take two cards. I could maybe do that even a little faster if I wanted to here. And start off from the top, I'll take two cards. Action. Take two. The next shot we're gonna do is a parallax move. What that means is that as the slider goes around, it arcs and it keeps whatever is in the center of the frame in the center of the frame. So it allows me to get in here on Keith's shoulder. And as I'm looking at John, I keep John in the whole time that he's starting to deal his cards and it keeps him right in the center. The difference between that parallax, like I say, and just a, a dolly is that the dolly is moving past your subject, is more disconnected from your subject, is not as concerned about the subject. A parallax is focused on the subject. So it becomes a great POV shot, a great product shot, or a great way to kind of romance the thing you want the viewer to look at. The next shot is an overhead shot or a flyover. The reason to call it flyover is because the camera's moving. It's not just a locked off overhead shot. That overhead shot is used to create interest in the video to give you kind of a little more perspective. It's also a great time if people are gonna lay out something that you wanna look at, a map, uh, a book, uh, something that you want people to be able to see. You get that higher overhead view. Now the viewer gets to see exactly what the actors are looking at. So our next shot is a push in. It can either be a slow push in, which just adds a lot of drama, like you're looking at an actor responding to what's about to happening or what is happening in front of them, or it can be a quick in, wham, like all of a sudden this thing just happened to me and you get that startling reaction. I don't try to pull the focus the whole way. I'll focus on my end and then I'll either set my, I did my hand here and a couple of them where I just pushed up to my hand to let it focus. I just want to bump my hand when I do that. But then I will also just roll into where it looks like it's in focus or get that point, just do it a few times where it feels like that's the right point and you can get it to be in focus. The next shot is a pull back. If you do it quick, it really is a matter of surprise or reveal. We see him bring his gun up. As a, it's a way to introduce a new subject, a new person into the scene. Or you can do it really slow where the camera just slowly pulls back and you slowly see just the enormity of what this person has to overcome in the scene. Like they've got this long way to walk, they got this great way to go. Those are two very different emotions and very different pacing for the piece. So this is a crane shot, really it's a crane up or a crane down because it's just a matter of you can come off the floor, either off from his shoes or off from his feet. You can come up to what I've seen with his side is he goes down for the gun. So we kind of go down to reveal the gun or over his shoulder to come up over his cars to be able to see John across the table there. So it's just a matter of creating a, a way to direct the viewer's eye to what we want them to see. 
and to come from a low angle into a normal eye level or high angle. So this camera move is really, it's a parallax on a vertical crane shot, which is interesting because you go from this kind of high, looking over the shoulder, looking down at what he's doing shot, and in that process, he's almost in the, a meek, more submissive position because he's low and under the camera. And as you come down, you really push him into a below the eye level high heroic shot. So he's really like the hero. So you can go the reverse, like I pull out a gun and I'm low, we got this gun, but it's a banana. And now we're up here. Now I'm an idiot. You know, gun, banana. I think you get the point. <laughs> so low angle, hero. High angle, more either can be neutral-ish to more submissive, and that's just an interesting, or it can just be an interesting play on that I wanna see what's going on on the table, and I'm now going to let the audience see what's going on underneath the table. So this move is not a dolly move as, as a flat plane across our subject, but this is called an outward curve, and it's done on these devices, uh, the C-Pan Arm or the C-Pan Arm Mini here, and what it does is it, it allows the camera to turn at the end, so it gives you Basically, on a like a, a three-foot slider, it gives you the equivalent of like a five-foot because the camera view is turning out on each end as you get to the end. So the camera's not turning, keeping turned in when in a parallax, which is the lens is trying to stay like this. This is allowing the lens to look out. So it's like looking out and then looking way back over here. So it gives you a big sweep. If you're shooting a car or you're shooting a, a large scene and you want to just show a, a larger scene and a move that's gonna take in a larger area than just your normal slider wood straight across and you just put it on this outward curve and it allows you to sweep a much bigger area. So we're in here really tight and it uh, gives me a nice shot between the two of them here. So just that outward sweep gives me a lot more than I would get if I was just sliding straight across here. So there you have a look at eight camera moves that can help either enhance your video or really drive the drama of your video depending on how you use them. These are not just for cinema, they're not just for documentary or for interviews or just general production, they're just for everyone. Each one of these moves can be applied to your project and how you shoot. So look at them and decide which ones are going to work. You cannot use all these moves all the time, it will become just too much. It's like eating ice cream at every meal. Although eating ice cream at every meal is not so bad, I don't know. <laughs> But you don't want to eat ice cream only at every meal. So you want to use them to try to communicate what you want to say and to start a visual dialogue with your viewer so that the visual camera moves become a clue to the emotion that's going on, to the things you want them to feel, and the things that you want them to, uh, to understand in the piece that you're doing. The reason I love the Nine Point Solution C-Pan Arms is because it gives me the ability to do all of these moves with one device. You don't have to have both of these. They both will do all of these moves. It's just a matter of that outward curve was so large on the big arm that it was nicer to get in on the small arm to get that outward curve in more of an intimate kind of setting. It's also nice to fly with this one, which is what I love to use it with. It goes into your suitcase, easy to travel with. But the larger arm is great for REDs, for uh, C200s, all the larger cameras, and gives you such a great array of moves you can do with it. It's very worthwhile looking at. But most importantly, I want you to share some of the things that you've learned about doing camera moves. Show us some pieces, put them up on our Facebook group. If you wanna make the transition from just natural light to strobe light, get our Mastering Studio strobes download. It's at theslendlens.com. It's gonna teach you what strobes you should buy, how to use them, and has all kinds of lighting setups. It'll help you perfect the skill and be using strobes in no time. So get over to theslendlens.com. So that about wraps it up for us here today. Hold on, we're not done here. Subscribe today now. You better subscribe to The Slant Lens because I think one of these gentlemen dates your grandma and they know exactly where you live. So subscribe today. Keep those cameras rolling. Keep on clicking.